Welcome, so let's invite Mark up to stage. Uh, Mark's from Intel. It used to be at at and Bell Labs, so I'm sure he has a long time ago. <laughs> so let's hear what he's up to right now. Okay, change. Change is a, is a hard thing. So we started this journey for um, RealSense, or we called it perceptual computing, about five years ago. And we had this vision that we really wanted to change the way that devices see the world. You know, we see the world in 3D, obviously, that's how we were born. Um, but devices really were very limited. So the challenge we had was how do we actually make that much more natural, much more immersive, and hopefully more intuitive. So the challenge came first was to capture the world in 3D, you need a 3D sensor. Right? That's the kind of the foundation of what we looked at. So we looked at a number of technologies. I'm sure you played with many. I see some fantastic technologies here from very, very high-end sensors to very kind of low-end ones that you can scan quickly. I wouldn't call it low-end, but you know, more cost-effective. Our challenge at Intel was uh, we want to make this available to everyone in the world. Right? That's, our, that's, that's what Intel wants to do. We want to make it ubiquitous across you know, many, many platforms. So we ship about a million PCs and tablets every day. Okay, that's a lot. So to get there, you have to have shrink things down so you can actually make it very, very small. So after about four years, a lot of work, we now have a 3D sensor this small. So this can now fit into any notebook, tablet, and phablet. And basically, we're shipping now. We just launched lots of OEMs at CES. And we'll see this in tablets second half this year. Okay, So I'll show you some demos that a lot of people have not seen yet. So one of the things, I'm sorry to go back is that when you look at why, what we try to do initially was to really change the way you interact. So there's two areas of interaction. One is when you actually look at the screen or we can call it a selfie interface, right? So this is where you're interacting with your screen. So you wanna capture this, I call it an intimate space, a couple inches from the screen or sensor to about three or four feet. Okay, what do you wanna do there? You wanna track your fingers, your hands, your face, even your emotions. So the resolution we can capture is I can see this fluctuation in your skin, I can see your heart rate. So now I have biometric information. If you get really excited, your heart rate goes up. And we have this one crazy developer making this game where it's a really spooky, scary game. Your heart rate starts to go up. And if it gets too high, it gets even worse. So you have to calm your body down and it gets easier and you can walk it through. It's kind of freaky, but anyway. So you can do some really strange things because you're tracking all this information. The other thing we're looking at is micro expressions. Everyone know what micro expressions are? Pretty interesting. So within a frame, you can see if you're frustrated, angry, or happy, et cetera. So if you get really frustrated, you get stuck in a game, or you're trying to learn something, you're really frustrated, now you can actually change it and make it easier, give you hints. Okay, and this is really interesting in terms of ways you're actually incorporating this data. This is launched now. We did a big launch at CES. Every big PC OEM you know, HP, Dell, Lenovo, Asus, Fujitsu, et cetera, they're shipping product today. You can go see it over in our, our area, or go buy it online, it's even better. But uh, I'm not gonna show that today because that's actually shipping. It's probably one of our big initiatives. But the thing I really wanna focus on is we have an SDK with all those technologies incorporated for free for our, our developers. Because we developed a platform. We need the development community like yourselves and others to create these great experiences. So what we've done is provided just our technologies, facial recognition technologies, emotion technologies, speech from Nuance. Uh, Mattel's actually a big partner for, our, for us for augmented reality. We're including this in our SDK for free to allow people to develop these great experiences. So that's critical for us. So when you talk about real sense, it's not about a 3D sensor, it's, it's one of the key elements, but it's about the whole platform. So that's really, really important for us to provide that to our consumers, to our businesses, et cetera. So that's kind of the, the Uber in terms of what we're doing. But what I want to do is show you the actual technology. So Dimitri, if you can come up and kind of show you what's, what we're gonna show off um, in the next six months or so. So we're launching a, a tablet version of this technology. So what I talked about first was kind of what we called user-facing. So it actually looks at you. This is more of the world-facing, so for your phone or a, or a tablet mode where I'm taking pictures or capturing the world, because you really want to capture reality in a new way. So one of the hard things to do was look at ways to capture people or, or objects. So what we're going to show right now is just kind of the raw point cloud data that we've incorporated in this prototype tablet, and uh, he'll get this up and running hopefully but it's a typical demo, so I'll talk some more. So what we're trying to do here is integrate this in a very, very small form factor. And you got it running? Okay, good. Can you show it? There you go. So can you see me? So this is running between 30 frames a second or 60 frames, depending on whatever mode you pick. So now this is real data. You can actually rotate me around. So that's me, now I'm rotating in real time. So you can see that point cloud data, which is kind of cool, right? You never see this. But, so what we're doing here is we're using this as a new way to do video 
So we show this at CES. Now all these crazy rock and roll bands actually want to do these weird, weird MTV-like performances where you're actually doing these effects. Can you switch to the cool sand effect? If uh, that works. Just, oh, okay. I'll come back. All right. So that's that's the one. You want to do the the scan now? And which one? All right. So we're going to scan someone. So the thing that we thought would be really interesting is can I scan uh, objects and people? I'll be an object now. So tell me if this is good. So I, I won't talk all more. All right, so if you spend a little more time walking around, we can capture the full, full, full body. So our goal is to miniaturize this and take this anywhere. All right, so now you can scan anything from objects to people. So imagine this is a real 3D selfie. I just bronze myself, or he bronzed me. So I can drop myself into a game, which you think is really, really exciting. So if you can scan your full body, rig your body, and now drop yourself into a favorite game or share it to tell your friends, we think it's really, really compelling. So if we spent a little bit more time, so there I am, kind of half of a quarter of me right there, which was done in about five seconds. So if you take about a minute, I think you do a full capture. So we really believe in actually taking these devices around anywhere and capturing people, objects, and things. And if you show kind of this, we took this a little bit longer. We took about two minutes to capture. This is the kind of quality you can get if you actually spend a little bit of time. This was not post-processed at all. This is a straight capture with our camera and, and texture map, okay? So this is what you can expect in terms of what's coming soon. And the last thing I want to show you is because you're actually mapping everything in 3D, we talked about what you can actually do. So if I can map areas or environments, we think it's a really interesting, disruptive, kind of interactive gameplay, or even sharing things. So let's just imagine you're a 12-year-old kid in your bedroom and you want to create your kind of world. So you throw a pillow down, you throw some different things, you scan it, and now you convert that into a lunar landscape or whatever your favorite toy environment may be. So what Dimitri's showing here is just doing a quick scan in real time. This little robot guy walk around. He actually knows what things are. He knows the cliff is there. If he goes too far off the cliff, he'll actually fall off the cliff. We actually have, up oh, there, the car fell off. See? So you can't do that with anything without depth. You have to know the depth information. So what we're providing is scene, our scene perception library is based on slime implementation. We have occlusion libraries to make sure you don't actually walk in or crash into the different mountains. So we're actually working with all the top studios, all the Hollywood guys, is to really create some really interesting things. I'll have some announcements in the next couple of months, but I can't tell you who they are, but you can imagine you can drop yourself into your favorite world. So those are things we're looking at doing. So um, I think that's pretty good for now. So that's kind of the quick demos. So in summary, what we want to do with, it, uh, with the real sense is to really make this ubiquitous across the board. We believe that every device that has a 2D camera should be a 3D camera, so to actually capture what you need to capture. But to be honest with you, the, the really breakthrough experiences are just right now at the tip of the iceberg. We're looking for you know, creative people like yourselves to do something magical. So that's what we're looking for. Thanks. <laughs>